Alright, today we're going to talk about the P6. The P6 is a standalone mixer and pasta extruder with automatic cutter, cooling fan, and cooling sleeve. It's very versatile, very fast, and uh, very efficient. The P6 ships without a plug, so make sure to contact a local electrician uh, to have a plug installed on the machine that matches your wall outlet. The, uh, the <clears throat> P6 is 220 uh, volts, will operate on 208 to 240, uh, three phase. I'm going to go over the basic functions of the machine and how to get started. Um, here is the on off switch. In the zero position, the machine is off. In the one position, the machine is on. I'm ready to run. Below are the three connectors. The one on all the way to the left is used for the multi-unit attachment. The one in the center is used for the fan. And in order to hook the fan up, you pull the tab up. Take your connector here and insert it. And then press the locking tab down. Uh, you'll notice that each connector has a dust cap. And that's to prevent uh, flour or water or any kind of debris from getting inside those contacts. So when they're not in use, keep them covered. Over here we have the uh, fuse for the 24 volt system, which is the uh, pasta cutter. And uh, here's the connector for the pasta cutter here. Um, that gets inserted and then uh, rotated to the right and that'll hold it in place so that the cable doesn't fall out. Uh, moving up, we have the um, on-off selection for the fan and also the on-off selection for the cutting motor. We have two start and stop stations. Uh, the one on the left uh, will start for mixing and the one on the right will start for extruding. And this is to eliminate any confusion um, when operating the machine. Up here on the top right, we've got the emergency stop or the slam switch. Um, when the button is depressed, it will stay depressed and uh, prevent the machine from operating. So in order to release it and re-engage the machine, you need to rotate it clockwise and uh, the button will pop back out. This is a green indicator light, which indicates you have power. Anytime the machine is switched on, this light will remain on. After the machine is plugged in, you'll see when uh, the on-off switch is moved to the one position, the green light illuminates, indicating that you have power and the machine is ready to start. As soon as it's safe <clears throat> and the gate is closed, uh, if you press the uh, green button, you'll see that it illuminates, indicating that it's in the mixing position and opposite when it's in the extruding position. We're going to start by assembling the P6. I want to go over some key features that are really important in, uh, in your success. Uh, the first component is the auger. and This is probably the most important uh, feature in the machine. And uh, <clears throat> You'll see that the uh, mating end uh, needs to be completely inserted in the machine in order for it to operate properly. Failure to do so um, will, will definitely cause, uh, cause failure. So I'm going to start by inserting that in the machine here and uh, gently rotating it until uh, everything lines up and you'll see that it's completely inserted. This has to be fully inserted into the machine and we'll demonstrate that uh, further as we, as we move along. The die gets inside, uh, inserted into the die sleeve as so and then gets uh, just screwed on by hand. Don't use the wrench all the way. Now I recommend installing a die that you're not actually going to be using. Uh, those dies that you will be using should be soaking in warm water and, uh, and warming up getting ready for, uh, for your batch. Next we're going to install the uh, mixing <coughs> paddle from above and that's going to protrude out here, get locked in place in the back. followed by this cap, which is going to hold it in place and also act as a bearing surface. Once it's completely installed and pushed back, you rotate this tab to the side, lock it in place. You can also pull up on it to re-engage it and apply more pressure, but it, it shouldn't be necessary. I want to completely demonstrate to you how important it is to install the auger properly. The auger needs to be completely back and uh, <clears throat> that's the only way to ensure that the drive is completely engaged and nothing will get damaged. Next we're going to install the mixing paddle which gets installed with this end facing forward and 
and then slides back in there. We're going to begin by uh, adding our dry ingredients after we have the machine assembled. Um, now I've already pre-measured this out at uh, 6 kilograms of semolina and this is a great recipe to start with because it's very easy, it's very straightforward and uh, you'll get used to the consistency of the product. Great. So now that we've added our dry ingredients, we're going ahead and uh, close the gate and uh, we'll lock it in place here and uh, we'll start the machine and uh, start adding our liquid. Safety is paramount with any machine. Um, so never place your hand or object or anything inside the mixing hopper when the machine is in the on position. We've got our, our dry ingredients filled. I've uh, put six kilograms of uh, dry semolina, or sorry, number one semolina. And I've got the gate locked in place. We're going to go ahead and turn the machine on and start the mix. Uh, so we're going to press the green button for the mixer and get that started. Now I've got a, a predetermined amount of water uh, already set and we want to slowly add that over the course of say 30-35 seconds or so. And that's going to allow uh, all the, the ingredients to mix slowly and evenly and, pre and prevent clumping. So it's important to keep a minimum amount of product uh, in the mixing hopper. I'd say on, uh, on average you probably don't want to make, a, make any product in the mixing hopper less than say 3 kilos. Uh, you just won't get an even mix and it's going to cause you com more complications than it's worth. While our machine's mixing we're going to go ahead and get the uh, cooling fan set up. And uh, these tabs are going to go simply to those slots on the uh, legs of the machine and we'll get it set up. In the beginning of the video we showed you how to, uh, how to install the, uh, the connector, but just to go over it you know, quickly, I'm going to pull this tab up and get rid of the, the, uh, the cap. This guy gets inserted and locked in place. Make sure that the cooling fan fins are facing up and the motor is facing down. All right, it looks like our product's ready and uh, we're going to go ahead and check it. So we're going to turn the machine off uh, because again, you never want to put your hands inside the machine uh, when the, when the power switched on. So we're going to go ahead and inject the product and, and as you can see, the, the consistency is, is pretty perfect. Now uh, as we squeeze it together, you see that it forms nicely and, and this, is, this is exactly the consistency that you, you're, you want to see when, uh, when you're making pasta. Great, so let's get set up. So our cutter's already been plugged in and we're ready to extrude. So we're going to install the uh, single blade cutting knife, uh, which gets installed just as so. And you see inside the knife, it's actually spring loaded, um, which will put a little bit of pressure against the die and keep it even. Don't press too hard. Um, as a matter of fact, you just want to put a slight amount of pressure on the die. And then with this knob on top, uh, you tighten it down and it'll hold the motor in place. What you definitely want to refrain from doing is, is pushing it in all the way because the die, the knife is going to start to cut into the die and you definitely don't want that. So with the switch for the cutter and the uh, extruder running, <clears throat> uh, the next step is to dial the speed in. And uh, that can be done from this uh, knob right here on the front and we can get some consistent shape going. Now you'll see all these ridges. This is caused because the die is still cold and it needs to warm up. Uh, so that can either be done beforehand or it can be done after the fact. Just by letting the machine run for a few minutes. And After we've finished uh, our batch, it's time to disassemble the machine and get ready for, uh, for cleaning. It may be necessary to use a wrench to remove the, uh, the die ring. Uh, just, it all kind of depends on how much pressure was built up and, and how much pasta is left inside the machine. To do so, just use the tool as such and it comes right off. Great, so now to, to start <clears throat> cleaning the machine, we're going to remove the mixing paddle. 
both the mixing paddle and the end cap uh, are dishwasher safe and they can be cleaned either by hand or in a dishwasher if it's convenient. We recommend scraping everything just with a, a pizza dough scraper and to remove all of the, uh, the remaining pasta and bits. Uh, it can either be sucked out with a vacuum cleaner uh, or you can use an air compressor, whichever is easiest. Don't recommend uh, pouring water in the bowl as uh, it just kind of gums stuff up and, and it'll get things stuck and it, it does, it's not really that helpful. In case the auger is stuck and won't come out uh, when it's ready time for cleaning, you can use the, uh, the spanner wrench and uh, insert it behind the, the tip here just to get it moving. And you'll see that once it breaks free, it, it can pretty much be removed by hand. There we go. Cool. And uh, again, these channels, they can either be cleaned out with a pick uh, or the, the pizza scraper, as I mentioned before. And then a, a vacuum cleaner or uh, an air compressor does a great job of getting the remaining debris out. And uh, at that point, you can just wipe it down either with a sanitizer or, or whatever uh, is required. And that's pretty much it.